In the last chapter, we saw how free energy related to equilibrium and equilibrium constants. In the previous video, we saw how electric potential can be combined with an equilibrium expression in the Nernst equation. So it shouldn't be surprised that electric potential and free energy can also be linked. Here is the result of combining our work with the Nernst equation with free energy. F is Faraday's constant still and that's at value 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. This is the one that we saw on our equation sheet from the college board. So here's our equation, delta G equals NF times the electric potential. Remember the college board uses just a capital E for electric potential, not that fun epsilon. N is the number of moles, in this case the number of moles of electrons and F is Faraday's constant. So if I have an iron-zinc electrochemical cell, and I'm going to propose that this is happening, the iron is going to oxidize from neutral iron to iron 2, and the zinc is going to reduce from zinc 2 to neutral zinc, I want to know the equilibrium constant for this cell, assuming standard conditions. And I want to know if this process is spontaneous as written. So in this example, we have iron, which is neutral, oxidizing to go to iron 2 plus and giving off two electrons. And we have zinc reducing, gaining two electrons and turning into neutral zinc. Now my first instinct is that zinc is more reactive than iron. So having zinc reduce and iron oxidize is actually the opposite of what they would want to do in nature. Zinc being more reactive is more likely to oxidize than iron. So my first instinct of this is that this is not a spontaneous reaction. But let's go find out. We just saw this equation relating free energy to electric potential. We said that delta G under standard conditions will equal the negative value of the number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the standard electric potential. In the last chapter, we related delta G to the equilibrium constant. We said delta G under standard conditions equals negative RT ln of the equilibrium constant K. So we could go and use the first equation to find the delta G value and then use the delta G value to find the equilibrium constant. Or we could simply just combine these two statements and say that negative N F epsilon naught equals negative RT ln of K. So let's do that. What we need is we need to know the number of moles of electrons, and from our equation, that's 2. We need to know Faraday's constant, which is given to us. We need to know the standard reduction potential. Now I'm not given that. We're going to have to look that up. We're going to know the ideal gas constant, which we know and we are given the temperature, well at standard conditions this temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. So the only thing I have to do now is I have to find the standard reduction potentials. So let me pop in that table. So we're looking for two reactions. One is we're looking for the reduction of zinc from zinc 2 plus to neutral zinc. So that's this reaction right here. That gives us a negative 0.76 volts for an electric potential. We're also looking for the oxidation of neutral iron into iron 2. Well, this is a reduction potential. So the reaction of the reduction of iron 2 into neutral iron is right here. But we're going to have to flip it for the oxidation reaction. So here is a reduction. It's negative 0.44 volts. For oxidation, it's going to be positive 0.44 volts. We move back over. This reaction right here is negative 0 0.76 volts. This one has a standard potential of positive 0 0.44 volts, giving us a total potential negative 0 0.32 volts. The fact that we have a negative electric potential for this cell is telling us that this is an electrolytic cell. This is not a spontaneous process. So we've answered the second question first, which is fine. So let's plug into this equation. I've got negative 2 for the number of moles times Faraday's constant, 96 
1,485 coulombs per mole times the standard electric potential, which we said was negative 0.32 volts. That's going to equal negative R, negative 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin, times the standard temperature, which is 298 Kelvin, times the natural log of our equilibrium constant. Now before we do the math, let's check units here. I've got coulombs, I've got volts, I've got joules, I've got moles, I've got Kelvin, I've got Kelvin. So a couple of things I can cancel out. I've got Kelvin here, I've got Kelvin here. I have moles here, and I have moles here. What am I going to do with coulombs, volts, and joules? Well, if we remember, a volt is defined as a joule per coulomb. So having a joule per coulomb, that cancels out these coulombs here, and that cancels out these joules here. So it actually works. In the last chapter, we had to convert 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin into kilojoules because our delta G values were in kilojoules. But because we're measuring things in volts here, which are joules per coulomb, we can just leave this value alone. When I do the math, I get the ln of K equal to negative 24.9. So that means my equilibrium constant K equals 1.50 times 10 to the negative 11. So I'm getting a K much, much smaller than 1, which is telling me that the forward reaction isn't spontaneous. The reverse reaction is spontaneous. So is the process spontaneous as written? No. All right, we've got a K value less than 1, and we've got a total electric potential that's negative. So this is definitely not a spontaneous process.